Hey everybody, welcome back to TT Plays. I am going to be going through Fractured Crown one element at a time for Grand Archive. And today, well, I thought we'd start with water. Now, I'm not going to cover all the cards in the set. Uh, there aren't that many, but I was going to cover the ones that I thought were most important, most impactful, or honestly, that I'm just most excited about. So let's just dive right into it. And I want to start with the fractals. So water has three fractals, and I think protective fractal is the worst but I still think it's a good card because I like what the fractal is doing, right? Basically, it gives you a mana rock. So we're paying for a mana rock. This one costs four, but theoretically, we're getting renewable resources from that rock, right? So reservable, when paying for this, you may rest this object to pay one of that cost, right? So for four, I basically get this mana rock that I can tap later on. This one's a little weird because it also has tap to prevent the next one damage that would belt to champion this turn. And that's why I think this one's the worst. A, it's the most expensive. B, it's secondary or tertiary effect I'm least excited about. If I'm tapping it to pay a cost, then I can't tap it to reduce damage, vice versa. So uh, protective fractal, not huge on, but I do like the fractals. And if the game is slow enough, which I think it is now, I'm really excited about what fractals kind of bring to the table as far as like renewable resources and a longer game stay, right? The deep sea fractal I am higher on for sure. This enters the field rest. It only costs two though. Big fan of that. Each player puts a top card of their deck into their graveyard. There are obviously decks that will try to abuse this a little bit more. It doesn't have to be a full on mill deck though. Maybe you just run more native floating memory than your opponent. Maybe you have things that need things out of the graveyard. So I do like the deep sea fractal a lot more mainly because of the cost. I'm not going to lie to you. Two is way more palatable than four for me. I like the Deep Sea Fractal a lot. I would like it a lot more if I didn't know about Fractal Intrusion, which is incredibly good. Uh, cost three. On enter, you can banish a card with floating memory from your graveyard. When you do, look at target opponent's memory and discard a card from it. This is great early game in order to get that renewable resource. Fantastic late game when your opponent ends up sticking you know, bombs down there in their memory because that's all they have left. So Fractal of Intrusion is just uh, incredible. Uh, it, it, it's really good. Like we're losing a card from Floating Memory, but we're taking a card out of their actual memory. That's a trade I will take almost all the time. In addition, we're getting this mana rock we can use recurring repetitively. So I like all three of the Fractals. The Fractal of Intrusion, by far, I think is the best Fractal out there. So... Fractals, I'm pretty high on. Fracture Eyes, not to be confused with a fractal. Uh, a, I like it because Merlin's on it. But on a more serious note, Water didn't have a lot of great ways to deal with Regalia. So target item or weapon becomes a Cleric Fractal with Reservable and loses all other abilities, plus it has Floating Memory. So you can almost argue it replaces itself with that Floating Memory. But this is a great way to shut down something your opponent has. Now, it does get, again, reservable. You're giving them a mana rock, but this is really the only thing that we have as a water player that wasn't neutral in order to deal with that. That's why I'm pretty high on Fracturize. I think it's really good, especially if water is trying to play this longer game. I think we want more answers to these weird cards. That being said, I get it. We play a longer game. We've given them a mana rock. They're going to get a lot of value out of it. So I do like... Fracturize. Worth noting, you can use it on your own stuff. Not necessarily advocating for that. I'm just letting you know it's an option. All right, enough about that. Frostbind is what everyone was kind of up in arms about, and it's a counter spell. It's literally a negate for magic. So, negate target card activation. And some people are held up on what a card activation is. And a card activation is basically a cast in Grand Archive terms, right? So, where negating target card that's been cast unless it's controller pays two. Banish the card that had its activation negated this way. So, incredibly powerful. Probably the best card in the set. It's why I'm really excited about water. It's why I'm excited about water Merlin. It's why I'm excited about water anything is Frostbind's command, right? One of my biggest complaints about the deck is a lot of the decks were like, here's my combo. Do I win? And it's not like you were interacting with the combo. You were usually like, presenting your own combo back or you were presenting like a pre-disruption piece um maybe like a choking orb uh, a safeguard amulet or something like that so i do like frostbind bringing actual counter into the game of grand archive 
I am interested to see where this goes long term. I don't think any of us just want blue white control and magic butting heads into each other, right? But I think one counter spell in the game is great. I think introducing counter the magic into the game is great. Again, it's it's a negate. It's not a pure counter. There is counter play around it, but it is very very strong. Definitely, in my opinion, the most impactful card in this set. And I'm excited for water to get it. Because, again, I'm excited for these water brews that have been running through my head. Frostbind Apostle. Initially, I thought was trash. Then I read the rules again. If an ally's health goes negative, it dies. Cool. So now it's a removal spell that happens to have a body on it. Now I'm way more excited about this. Now, level 2 plus in order to get that, a mm, little less excited about that. But... Uh, basically is it intercept. So you're paying three for a zero two with intercept. Honestly, the zero two really doesn't matter. You just need something to stick in front of that and take the blow. But it also has that basically, I don't know, what's a four damage nuke from magic lava axe. I think that might've been five. I can't remember, but you basically are doing four damage to something else. Again, if you can get their health negative, it's a fantastic way to kill them. So I really like the frostbind apostle now. Um, definitely not as much. As I like frostbind. Probably not as much as I like Fracturize, but I think it's a really good card that you should consider if you're looking for that longer game and you want a late game removal that can also double up as an Interceptor. I'd probably run two of these in my list. I don't think I'd want a four sweet of them. Cloak of Stillwater. I'm honestly not sure about this, but I put it on here because I'm excited about it. It's an assassin item. All the assassin benefit does is drawing you a card, but again, drawing card, hey, we're all for that. Banish a card with floating memory from your graveyard. Prevent the next three damage that were built to your champion this turn. So we definitely get to a point in mid to late game where our floating memory isn't as useful. And if we're running a lot of it, being able to basically just turn each one of those into a soak three can be really large and impactful. I like the renewableness of this, right? The fact that we can use it over and over again. I like this if water is able to drag the game out into this mid-range or long-term counter. And I... I don't even want to talk about getting three games in an hour in with it, but I'm excited for this if water is able to successfully slow the game down, right? If we're getting values from our fractals, if we're using Frostbind to slow things down, if the game's slow enough that Frostbind Apostle is coming in, removing a creature and intercepting once we're at level two plus, then I think Cloak of Stillwater could be really good as a way to continuously reduce damage in this longer, grindier game that's going to laugh at the idea of getting three games in the best of three. Innovate Knowledge is the last card I really wanted to talk about, and I think this card's amazing with a bunch of caveats. So first of all, we're going to resolve this card in its printed order. So if deleveling would kill you, don't use this card because we have to delevel first, which lowers our maximum hit points. Then we recover five. Just important to remember, putting that out there. We D-level, and in order to D-level, right, we return the top card of your lineage to your material deck, and then we recover five. Then we draw two cards. I've played a lot of card games over the year. It's almost never bad to draw two cards unless we're playing Pokemon, and then I just want to draw seven. But drawing two cards, really powerful. In Grand Dark Ave, it's even more powerful. We talk about how powerful, like, we're playing multiple material slots and all that card does is draw us a card, that material card. So drawing two cards, really good. Recover five, really good. Deleveling, that's a negative. And how much you want to qualify it as a negative, I don't know. It really depends on the hero that you're playing. There are times where it will be a positive. I do think it would be interesting to delevel from uh, Tristan to then level into Xander. Or something like that. And, and I know we could come over the top or something like that. But um, I do think there might be a deck that manipulates that. I'm more excited about basically recover five, draw two cards. I think that is really powerful in and of itself. It is not often that a level is granting you five more, five hit points. So we're normally net coming out ahead in the hit point race anyway. And we're drawing two cards from it. So I'm really high in Innervate Knowledge. I'm ready to be proven wrong and for this card to be trash, but I, I am optimistic that this is going to be a good card. And the last card I want to throw out there as kind of a shout out is Ocean's Blessing. And I need to say this out front. I am not a Tamer player. I don't really understand the ins and outs of Tamer, but this card has so much text on it. It has to be good. 
and Water Tamer, I know, has been hideously lacking. So Taunt's a new mechanic. We have the giant tortoise. I think Taunt on the tortoise is phenomenal. It gets plus one to its butt. It base has floating memory. This has to be a good card. I'm excited to see what Water Tamer comes up with. I'm not a Tamer player. I'm excited for what my buddies come up with with it. I might mess around with it a little bit. I'm way more of a wizard or mage or maybe even a cleric now at heart. But I did want to throw out Ocean's Blessing as another card that I'm excited to see. So I want to wrap this up. You know, I like to keep the videos to about 10 minutes. Uh, a recap, I'm pretty high in the fractals. I think they're all really, really, really cool. I think intrusion is by far the best one. I think that's worth running, even if you're not running a total fractal package, just because it's so disruptive late game. Fracturize, I think again, really cool spell. Frostbind, incredible. In my opinion, the biggest meta changing card in this set and i would probably argue the most powerful card as well frostbite apostle don't forget if you reduce their health to zero they die it's pretty cool cloak of stillwater if we're playing this long game i like to prevent three points of damage every turn please theoretically cloak of stillwater can get that for you innovate knowledge i think will be good might also be complete trash but drawing two cards recovering five really really good deleveling it's hard for me to qualify how bad that is could be really negative. And someone out there, one of you Tamer players, please tell me how good Ocean's Blessing is. I think it's really good, but again, I'm not really a Tamer player. So I'm really excited about Grand Archive Fractured Crown here. I hope you are too. This is my run through of water cards. Stay tuned later in this week. Again, we'll be going through fire, we'll go through wind. Not gonna cover all of them, just covering the ones I'm really excited about. I hope you check out Grand Archive. If you happen to be in Colorado, you can find us at Smetrack Games or at Dueling Lands who's been supporting us from the beginning. So till next, everyone, cheers and happy gaming.